Hey everyone, welcome to part eight of this series and in this one and probably over the next good few videos that I'll be making we're going to be discussing the data schema which is absolutely fundamentally the key, the backbone to our application and will be to any application that you build. Now one piece of advice I would give you very strongly is do not start in bubble defining your data structures that's the last place that's the very end point of defining and deciding on your data schema that's the last place so that's where you will transpose where you determine your data schema into bubble as a last step now obviously over time that will change but fundamentally beginning a new app you will always start with a data schema now the process that i use is i always start with a pen and a pad and a pen and a piece of paper effectively and I draw out roughly the schema and then I'll throw that one away and, and do the next one but when I'm sort of know that I'm on the right track that's when I'll open up a data schema software and the many out there many of them are free with limitations uh, and the one that I use is one called lucidchart which is at lucidcharts.com and it's free for so many diagrams and you they let you put so many entities on a on a page and it just lets you draw out the schema and I just find it really useful. So the first thing you should do as well is to make sure that any change that you need to make in your data schema at any point in the process, you should, you should always have a live data schema document and that should always be reflected in your bubble database. So you can have as many drafts as you like but there should always be one live document. And when you need to add a field or add a new type or table or option set to your data schema is to add it into the the schema first and then add it into your bubble application so here we are in lucid chart along the side there i've created a new chart obviously along the side you get all of these different standard shapes and the one we're going to use is this one called entity relationship now by default lucid chart doesn't have this so if you're going to be using lucid chart what you'll need to do is to go into the shapes library and then just tick the entity relationship option halfway down the list on the left and then use the selected shapes and then you'll get these in here and so the one that i use is this one where basically you've got a header as it shows you there and then two columns one for the field name and one for the field type so in this one we're going to be start off by looking at our high level types our high level data types and as we covered previously, the highest level of all of your data types is predominantly for your usage as the app's developer and publisher. And that will be the SAS account that we mentioned before, because this is going to store the information about your end customer. Nothing to do with the actual data for the customer who is going to be using the application. This is the data about your SAS customers that you need to maintain. And obviously you can maintain a different page that is just for your dashboard for your admin so you can sort of see a list of all of your customers and things like that but at the minute we're just drawing this out because it is such a key part of our data schema so okay so let's name that in there SAS account and we're not going to draw too many fields out we're mainly going to be focused on our types and our relationships first and foremost and then we can add fields as we as we go through so I'm just going to give that one a name and that's obviously going to be of type text. Okay, and let's think about what else we'll need because probably in your app you're going to give a free trial. So the first one is going to be, is it a trial? So we will set that up and that's just going to be a yes or no. And probably your default value, I like to put a default value in there, it will probably be yes because the chances are initially they'll be signing up as a trial. And then you've got the expiry date of when that trial expires or the general subscription expires depending on how it is so that's going to be a date and the way that we can add more fields in there is just on the right under this advanced options of fields we can just click to add a new one so what i also want to put on there is that there needs to be certain users for that SAS account who are considered to be the admins who can go in and change things about the SAS account, the billing information, the company information, the invoice information, etc. So I'm going to put 
a field on there for admins okay and that is going to be a list of users so obviously we've not got the user on here at the minute but i'll draw that in but we all know that bubbles has a built-in user type so that is going to be a list okay so i'll just put that in brackets with an l just to indicate that that's what it is so that's our sas account information there so next one will, will be users we'll draw this out so let's just pop that there and okay i mean you can see how much more visual this is than actually just going straight into bubble and defining it as well so let's let's give it the name of user and we will say that this is first name which is of type text and then we've got last name and that's type text okay and then we've got email which is a built-in field so that is that's already there for us we don't need to add that and obviously somewhere in there there's a password but uh, bubble never lets us see that so we don't need to add that in there and across all of these tables as we discussed previously is there is a unique id field that never gets really shown to us other than when we're looking at the, the apps data you never see it as part of the schema but we all know that it is there okay so we've got that one there now what we need to do as we explained previously is each user has to be assigned to a SAS account at the point of which the user account is created, whether that's the first user who creates everything or whether it's another user who the original user has invited to, to be in there. So let me, what's happened there? That should be email, shouldn't it? I don't know what's happened there. So, okay, so this, this one is going to be a SAS account and that is going to be of type sas account now we can draw the relationships between the two so here we've got admins which is a list of user so what we can do there is just draw that down to there and the sas account is linked to the sas account type so we can just uh, link that up there as well okay so we can start to draw out the relationships see them visually on the page which we can't really do with that in, in standard bubble okay so let's just go back to the, the SAS account let's say in our app that we fully intend to have different levels different plans in our for our application does it like a starter plan and then all the way up to advance and let's say we've got we could have three plans you know it's up to you however you, you want to do it but let's say we've got three so what we can do we can leverage option sets for that so what I'm going to do over here, I'm not going to draw that one in. I'm just going to draw a one of these in here. And I'm just going to uh, call that, again, underscore. And I'm just going to call that SAS plan. And I'm just going to give it the option names. We all know, as I covered previously, is that the actual name of an option is stored in the display attribute so we're not going to cover at the minute additional attributes let's just focus on the different options that we can have in this particular one so let's say that we just have one as a starter standard standard and a premium plan okay and then what we can do in our sas account is we can add another field in there and we can say that this is a the SAS plan that they're on and that is linked to the SAS plan option set okay what I tend to do just to make it really obvious it's linked to an option set is I tend to put it in italics there even though the underscore gives it away a little bit and the same I tend to sort of put the, the header in that as well just in italics just so it's obvious even though it looks different on there And again, we can draw the link between the two so we know that that's where the relationship is. Okay, let's just pop that over there. So one of the other things we, that we haven't discussed so far in any of the previous videos is that the user, the, the end customer, if you like, the SAS account, 
Ollie wants to see their own data and we explained how we do that. We Essentially what we do is that we have a SaaS account on the user when they log in, we know which SaaS account they're linked to and then Privacy Rules deals with all of our other data types to ensure that they only see their own data. But let's say that with, within that SaaS account, that let's say it's, it's a company for example, but let's say that they have three different subsidiaries or a, a secondary company or whatever it is and they want to keep that data separate as well so they want to keep different organizations data separate under the umbrella of their SaaS account so with that one what we can do is again let's drag another one of these on and we're going to be looking at one that I tend to call organization so I call the data type organization because it could be a business, it could be a company, it could be a corporation, it could be a charity, it could be anything, okay? It could be a department for all we know. So I tend to just stick to organization rather than put a, a, a specific label on it. And throughout the rest of the system, I tend to then just refer to that as an org just to make it easy for myself. So let's give that a name and that's text as well. And these also have to be linked to a specific SaaS account. They can't just be sat there floating. They have to be under a specific subscription. So if SaaS account, if, it, if you don't like the sound of that, you could also call it subscription as well. SaaS account. And that is obviously of type SaaS account. Okay, and then obviously then that links up to the SaaS account type okay let's just drag that out so this is where things get a little bit interesting now because when the user logs in we we know from the SAS account that's assigned to them which subscription if you like that they're assigned to but they don't know which organization that they're going to use because all of our other data types are going to be separated out by organization or by the org as well as by the SAS account and the other thing as well, when they log in throughout the rest of the system, if we're going to apply privacy rules to implement that in the same way as we are around our SaaS account, if we want to implement privacy rules around our org, then we, the user also needs to know, be stored on there, which org that they presently have in use. So when they log in, they will select a, an org. Obviously, if there's, if there's only one, then we can use the default one but they can pick it and then we need to store it on the user themselves. So what we will do then is we will call that, sorry, we'll call that current org. And that will be of type organization. Now, there is a little bit of difference here because once the user set up, that SAS account will never change. They will always be linked to that particular subscription. However, they could go in there, do some work on one organization, on one company, and then go and switch to another company. And so this one will switch and change depending on what the user is doing. Now, what is good practice, obviously, is that when they log in, you can imagine that we don't know what organization they want. If there's only one, we will make sure that they pick the only one that's there. We don't want to get in their way. But also, let's say that they want, there's one particular org that they do most of their work on. So the user then should be able to set up a default org that when they log in, it just automatically goes in with that organization. So we can just call that a default org and we can call it organization again. And the only time then that we need to ask for the organization after they've logged in is if they've got more than one for the subscription and they, do, they haven't specified a default org, otherwise it will just go straight into that one. So again, we sort of need to apply these to our organization, both of them. Uh, okay, we will we'll do that and we'll pull that out there, okay? So I hope that you can sort of see, get a picture of what it is that we're, we're actually doing. So. If you imagine then, if we look at privacy rules, how that's going to work is that when it comes to the org, we only need to see the orgs, if you like, I should say organizations, that actually resign to this specific subscription. So we can set up a privacy rule to do that really, really simply. So what I'll do is I'll just add a text on here, just so that we can sort of highlight the privacy rule. Does it drop that? There we go. Okay, let's just drag that out there. So what I can do then is to say we'll call, we'll just, uh, 
let's just align that to the left and we will then say that uh, the privacy rule is equal to again we can just call it SAS rule and then what we can do is very similar to what we explained in in the previous video about privacy rules is we can simply then just say that this organization SAS account is the current users let me drag this out a little bit more SAS account so we would apply a privacy rule on the org on the organization table the organization type so that it only be visible if it's, it's the same if it's the SAS account that's assigned to it is the same as what the current user is logged in the SAS account remember everything is pivoting around this all our privacy rules are pivoting around this so when the user logs in that SAS account gets picked up and our privacy rules pick that up and make sure no other users data no other subscriptions data no other end customers data is shown so that's the privacy rule that we would that we would pick up on there I hope that all makes sense to you so in the next one we're going to carry on but this we're going to start putting together more of our different main data types this was more looking at the high level ones and how they apply and obviously start putting together some uh, option sets as well so listen see you in the next one thanks for watching take it easy